Billy Napier values the tight end position more than pretty much any other college coach does, and that could have them poised for a big season in 2022, and we're going to talk about how, only here on Locked On Gators. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. Happy Thursday. I'm Brandon Olson. You can find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find my written work with Whole Nine Sports. That's W-H-O-L-E, N-I-N-E Sports, and Giants Country of SI.com, where I talk a lot of so check it. Um, just a reminder, I'm on vacation this week and next week. We will have Monday through Friday episodes, though, so there's, there's that. We're going to have fun with it. I love the content that we have, and today we're talking about the tight end position. And if you don't know this, like if I haven't mentioned this before, my two favorite offensive positions are running back, and tight end. So uh, I love being able to do this, and you guys know by now that I love scheme. So, yay. Um, We're talking about the scheme here first because of the importance of two tight ends. 12 personnel is going to be a big deal in Gainesville. We'll see two personnel, as in zero two personnel. We'll see two tight ends and two running backs, 22 personnel maybe. We're going to see two tight ends is the important part here where – Billy Napier loves to do that because it, it frees up so much for you. And, and we're going to talk about one of the biggest ways this scheme will free it up because Billy Napier, Dan Mullen did it too, uh, but Billy Napier likes to run split zone. And a lot of you guys know, if, you, if you've been listening since during the season last year, you know that there is no concept in football that I love more than split zone, particularly split zone read. But split zone, I love it so much. Uh, I, 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 I'm not drawing up the artwork for you today, but I will tell you that split zone is basically wherever people want to be lined up. Imagine that there are two tight ends, we'll say one on each side of the offensive line. And if a tight end runs across the formation away from the play that is the split zone read so when you we saw it happen last year with emory jones and uh kimori jam kimori gamble emory jones had great chemistry on split zone read where emory takes the ball so he keeps it he does not give it to the running back running back runs to the left side of the formation tight end started on the left side of the formation running back runs to the left side of the formation so you're thinking okay the tight end is just lead blocking for him but no the tight end comes across the formation after the snap. The tight end comes across the formation right behind the offensive line. So still between the offensive line and the quarterback. Quarterback keeps, keeps the ball, runs to the right. Tight end runs to the right as well and makes that and makes that block on the unblocked end, or he just starts lead blocking, which Kamara Gamble would often do because uh, Emory Jones can usually outrun those defensive ends. And Anthony Richardson will have a field day with the defensive ends, but split zone is something that we're going to see so frequently from this uh, from from this Billy Napier offense and this Rob Sale offense, because not only will you see that split zone read, which you will see that split zone read, but you will also see just straight up the whole offensive line gets to go to the left, and there's an unblocked man on the right, and that tight end's coming across the formation to clean him up when the running back actually takes the ball. That's also split zone. Uh, if you play... If you play Madden at all and you ever run the play inside zone split, that doesn't work at all ever in your life. Uh, If you ever called inside zone split and you see that tight end come across, uh, that's what this is, but it actually is effective at this point. That's, that's the important part we're talking about. uh, We're talking about Billy Napier's offense here, but you'll also see it in the passing game, which we'll talk about also next segment. Um, But we've been talking about this concept quite a bit lately on the show. I think I mentioned it uh, on Monday's episode um, where we were talking about Anthony Richardson possibly being a Heisman candidate, but we'll see the tight end start on the left side. We saw this in the spring game. That's how one of the touchdowns were scored um, where the tight end started on the left side behind the offensive line, not necessarily in an H back ish role, like between 
any guard or tight end, but just behind. Uh, it's, it's if you play Madden, offset. Um, and then they run across the formation. And when they come across the formation after the snap, so let's say left hand right up here is tight end. Right here is quarterback. So quarterback starts here, tight ends over here. Tight end comes across the formation as that split zone action. Quarterback rolls that same side to with him. And if Anthony Richardson says, uh, I, I'm keeping the ball, block, then the tight end can just turn his head and block somebody in front of him. If Anthony Richardson checks the ball down to him, then he can just catch the ball, turn his head, and run through somebody. And that's an easy completion that leads for yards after catch opportunity. And that, that's one of the things that we're really looking for in the Florida Gators. So that split zone action is going to be so important. I know Ross Jackson with Locked On Saints loves split zone action as well. Um, I believe Zach Hicks from Locked On Colts does too. But split zone action and 12 personnel are going to be so crucial for this Florida Gators offense. They're going to be pillars of this offense, especially when you look at trying to just add to this rushing attack with 12 personnel. Because you could have two tight ends on the same side and run to that side, and then you've got your five offensive linemen there and the two tight ends going on top of any maybe receivers there. Going in motion with the tight ends is going to be huge. That's one of the reasons that there's 12 personnel, because one tight end will always be in line, and the other can come across the formation. Either, I mean, obviously we're talking pre-snap here because it's motion, but they can come across to be on the same side as that tight end. They can go opposite side and kind of create a more balanced formation or they can overload that one side. There's so much to do between the tight end group and this Billy Napier offense that that it's going to be just incredible, and I can't wait to see it. We're about to talk about how these tight ends will contribute more as receivers, but first, a quick word from our sponsors. It is summertime. I am on vacation, as you can see, clearly. I am I'm, I'm resting right now, but uh, no, I'm on vacation, and I feel pretty good with my body right now and my summer bod how i eat built bar every day that is my snack because i have a sweet tooth and if i don't have built bar i will have chocolate or something else and luckily built bar is coated in 100 percent chocolate most bars have 130 calories just four net carbs along with 17 grams of protein you could eat Bill Bar and not feel bad. They have delicious look. Like mud pie isn't even slap your mama good. Mud pie is punch everyone you've ever met in the face good. Like, like, like it's that good. Whether you're talking about the bar or the puff, it's the best one in my eyes. Easily. Just just so good. Built Bar is always coming out with new limited time flavors too, so that you'll never get bored. Use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off of your next order. That is LOCKED, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 to get 15% off of your next order with Built or BuiltBar.com. Thanks again for making Locked Navigators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. Now we're talking about how the tight ends can contribute as pass catchers. And to recap what I said last segment where we have Tight end starts on the left side. He runs across the formation behind the line of scrimmage, so still between the quarterback and the offensive line. Uh, So he runs behind the offensive line there to that right flat while the quarterback is also rolled out to the right. So they're both going the same direction. They're running parallel. Anthony Richardson can then check it down. That's an easy completion. Yards after catch, we saw them do it in the spring game on the goal line. I believe it was from the two-yard line that they ran it, scored a touchdown on it. And... I don't want to say it was popularized by, but the way that I learned it was through watching Cincinnati's offense with Desmond Ritter at quarterback and Josiah DeGuara at tight end H-back. He was a third round pick to the Green Bay Packers uh, in 2020, I believe. Um, Yeah, 2020. So working that across the formation is huge. Like I said, it's an easy completion. It's yards after contact and in uh, yards after catch and in red zone scenarios, goal line scenarios, easy way to get touchdowns because you're also... Let's say the defense is in zone. If they're in cover two, you're you're matching that tight end up against a corner, and he's probably going to be bigger, and he could likely win that battle. If it's cover three, it could be a safety or a linebacker. He might be able to outrun him. He might be able to run through him. And, and you're kind of just creating those mismatches, as we were talking about. Also, just working underneath in general, where you'll see tight ends running drags, running hitches, just trying to get those easy completions. That That's the important part here, because... We've been talking about Anthony Richardson for so much, and we keep talking about how this scheme is designed to help him allow himself to throw the ball deep downfield. 
but also to give him those easy completions, build his confidence, pad his stats, I don't care, um, to do whatever he can. And tight ends are going to be a big part of that because we'll likely see them run, let's say, uh, we'll see mesh underneath with them just crossing each other. We'll see one running a drag and then one running a hitch and just stopping right there. And you're kind of forcing players, if they're if you're in zone, you're forcing that linebacker to make a decision of, am I sticking with the guy that run the hitch or am I running to the three, or am I dragging with the drag for a little bit until he passes off to another zone, in which case you take advantage there. And I mean, in man, it's probably not going to be super effective. It just causes a little traffic there. But working underneath as safety nets, safety valves, whatever you want to call them, is going to be huge for this offense because there's going to be these receivers running deep. And also, Florida, they've got some speed at receiver, but it's mostly at depth. If you're looking at 12 personnel, you got two receivers on. It's probably Justin Shorter, probably Xavier Henderson. They're not super slow, but they're not the fastest guys. They're probably going to need a little bit of time to create that separation or, or find out what they're going to be able to do. And Anthony Richardson's going to have to read the defense, and he's going to have to do so much where having those tight ends as checkdowns and knowing where they'll be is going to be massive for this offense. But then also stretching the field vertically from the tight end position is something that we will see. We've got Keon Zipper and Dante Sanders are both pretty dang athletic. They've got enough speed and burst to make some plays happen where if we have, let's say, um, hmm, let's say one tight end on each side, they could both run up the seam. And if you're in cover three, that safety has to make a decision. If you're, running one up the seam and one across the formation or one running a dig, you're creating havoc over the middle of the field and forcing players to make decisions. As we talk about the scheme so much, where we're doing the same thing when we're talking about tight ends as receivers, you're trying to make the defense make decisions that they are not prepared to make. And that's one thing that we're going to see Billy Napier do, Rob Sale do, that they're going to just be so heavily valued in this offense. Again, as pass catchers as blockers, just running that 12 personnel, even an 11 personnel, by the way, they're going to be relied upon. It's not just when there's two tight ends on the field, but if we have one tight end on the field, inside zone split could be even better because then you got a lighter box and they're coming across. But looking at receivers again, as as receivers, uh, I wouldn't be shocked to see a tight end screen here or there. I think Florida's got some pretty athletic guys, like especially when you have Arliss Boardingham coming to Gainesville for the fall. You can run a screen with him. He's a receiver tight end hybrid. Give him the ball. Let him make some plays. It's all about getting easy completions here. And that's what Anthony Richardson is trying to do. And that's what Billy Napier is trying to do with these tight ends as receivers. We're about to talk about them more as blockers. But first, a quick word from our sponsors. To wrap up today's show, we are talking about the Florida Gators tight ends as blockers. And yes, we just spoke about the split zone, how they're going to be used in that way, obviously. But we're looking at other ways as well. Uh, there's there's two more ways that I want to talk about. And first off is the wide zone. Not even talking about the split zone, but just the wide zone. Where I've talked about it before of having one tight end on each side. Having two tight ends on the same side and obviously no tight ends on the other side. Those are going to be huge because Florida wants to run the ball frequently. And if you run wide zone, you can kind of arc it out with a tight end where they can just get their little push and get downfield to the second level to create more explosive runs. Because, I mean, if you've watched, I'm assuming you have watched Montreal Johnson highlights when he announced that he was transferring to Florida. I'm assuming you watched some Louisiana from last year just to, just to be like, hey, what's my offense going to look like? Um, I did before I even was like, I'm going to break it down. Um, so I was just like, yeah, I want to see what the offense is going to look like. You'll notice tight ends relied upon heavily, and there's a lot of explosive runs in Louisiana last year. Last year, Louisiana had, uh, I believe, a top three run blocking grade per PFF, and they were also one of the better run graded teams because they could create so many explosive runs, primarily through through blocking and opening up lanes and allowing these running backs to take advantage. One way they did that was tight ends. Ha- having active, athletic, agile tight ends that want to contribute as blockers. Because I think that's one of the things, too, where people talk about college tight ends and going, oh, they're not, they're not good blockers. Tight end college blocking, we don't ask them to do much. It's literally just a matter of, will you put in the effort to block? You don't have to hold them for long. You just got to hold them long enough. And working as double teamers, because also as blockers, we'll see our tight ends in pass protection this year, which we did not see much of at all last year. So we'll see that in Gainesville with tight ends pass protecting. 
especially when you look at trying to clear up space to challenge vertically, trying to force clear outs or block and releases, we'll see. So we're going to see tight ends contribute in so many ways. But the other way that I wanted to talk about also, as a blocker particularly, is as the H back spot. H back spot. Still that two tight ends, that 12 personnel, where you'll have one tight end in line, one practically in the backfield. That's what that H back is, if you don't know. It's a tight end that's pretty much in the backfield. Uh, he's not in line. He's not offset. He's farther down. And it, it frees up some space to, to kind of get more creative in the running game because, first of all, it makes inside uh, zone, it makes zone split easier or split zone easier because you have to just come across a formation. You don't have to come across the entire formation. So you just get to be basically kind of behind the guard, but in between the quarterback and center still. So like you're just like offset a little bit there. Um, and it makes it easier to do that inside zone split. Makes it easier to just run dive and, and just run right up the middle and just go, you know what? We're, we're, we're all going into the A gap. You're basically playing fullback is how you can liken it. So, which by the way, fantastic. Um, always love fullbacks. Bring, bring back Valdez showers. How about that one? Um, <laughs> that is a name that, it's been a long day. Uh, that was a name that I have not heard in a long time, but I did it to myself. Um, but also working as the H-back just in, in, in any way possible as a pass protector as well gives you a better chance to pick up the blitz. And, and it's just so crucial. It cannot be overstated how important the tight end position is to this Billy Napier offense, to this Rob Sale offense. And having two of them on the field, and there, we'll have three of them on the field at certain points. They're going to be so crucial in establishing this run game, and I know establish the run is such a, a, a boomer statement from, you know, three yards and a cloud of dust football. But we're, when we're talking about this offense, we want to establish the run to help open up the passing game later. It's not establish the run. It's just like Im impose your will upon the opponent. That is how you establish the run now. No, this, this is not the 40s. This is not 1927 before the forward pass. I think that's accurate um, before the forward pass was implemented into football. This is creating big plays on the ground to create big plays in the air. That is what we're talking about. When we say establish the run within Gainesville and tight ends are the way to do it. And, that, and again, it, it just, it cannot be overstated. It cannot be overlooked. It is one of the most important things you can even think about when you're talking about this Billy Napier offense, that tight end is, the tight end's more important than running back and wide receiver in this offense. I'll say that. There's quarterbacks, obviously, always the most important. Then it's offensive line, then tight end. And th that's insane. There's no other college offense like that. They just don't care that much about college tight ends. So Billy Napier and the Florida Gators, they're doing it, and, and it's game time. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. We'll be back tomorrow as we're talking about this offensive line. Now make your second listen to Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast. Rafael Barlow, Richard Stamen, Sam Ferris, and Leif Thulin give fans an in-depth look into the biggest prospects, the latest player rankings, and of course, big boards. For Locked On Gators, I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find my written work with Whole9Sports and Giants Country of SI.com, and I'll see you all tomorrow.